Hello my friends, it was very soon and particularly requested after my collection video on my folders that I do a collection video on the fixed blades. Now, my folders I guess I, I, I do use them all, I, I put them all to, to work and I do tests with them and I guess I do that with some of these as well but my fixed blade collection is a little bit more problematic. I'm not, I'm not a huge outdoorsman, I'll go outdoors whenever I can but I got small kids um, I, did, I got a full-time job. I do YouTube. I, you know, and yeah, I know you can merge YouTube with going outdoors, but I'm certainly not a hardcore outdoor using a knife to do all sorts of awesome bushman stuff. I'm just not. I just like them, and that's the, these are all kind of here for either experimentation or enjoyment or or whatever. There's probably only about two or three of these that I actually use in a regular, you know, sense. But hey. What am I gonna do? Uh, anyway, they're all here. This first batch are ones that are like not worth much, like not worth enough to just sell. Um, and I've beaten a lot of these up during testing or just during, you know, throwaway style use, using a knife for the wrong job kind of thing. I think a couple of these have been used to lay, uh, lay uh, to like turf or lawn turf um, and just cut that lawn and dirt and so the edges were ruined and you know, all that stuff. And yeah, they're all sort of under, 50 bucks. So we'll go through these one by one pretty quickly. So starting off is a Tarava Puko. This is a great knife, um, a real sort of more a Garberg competitor, but uh, this one was really a victim of my excessive edge testing. I really wanted to work out this 80 CRV 2 steel, and it is great. I could probably do with getting one of these that is as new again and really giving it a workout because it's a wonderful little knife. Um, this is the smaller version, you can get a larger version as well. Great um, thick stock. Uh, almost full tang, it's a bit of a stick going on there, but certainly a very uh, rugged knife. I've got a few more or a few more knives. I've got a uh, Mora Companion. This is my absolutely thrashed beta one. Uh, this one is one of the sharpest knives I've ever, I've ever had sent to me by a viewer, Stuart, and that's remained more or less unused. I've done a bit of like whittling with it and that sort of stuff, but that's about it. So, two standard Mora Companions, and then I've got a cold steel fin hawk, which is sort of like the cold steel's Mora, uh, and you know, it's about as good. Um, the sheath's a little less good. It's got um, doesn't have the little launch pad plate on it there. Uh, it's a little bit of a thicker stock. Um, the spine is sharp, which is good. So yeah, maybe like a little bit more of a deluxe version of a Mora. 4116 steel seems to perform about as well as Mora stainless. So that's another one there. Then I've got this Mora Robust, which um, I did a Coca-Cola patina on uh, just out of uh, experimentation. Uh, this is pretty dull right now. I used it um, pretty extensively in its review process and just beating it up. I made like a robust review. I was like, hey, maybe if I make a robust review, I'll get a like, four million views like Dutch Bushcraft did. Spoilers, I didn't. All right, moving on is a very similar knife, the Holtefers GK. Another sort of really thick, cheap, tough, tankish kind of little uh, Scandi style knife. Um, great little working knives. You get, you know, a whole bunch of these, put them in every car you've got and you'll, ne you'll be never short a good knife. Uh, the Mora Bushcraft Black, uh, sort of at the end of its life cycle, I ended up putting like a mirror polished Scandi on it and then I ended up using it a bit more because it's a really fun edge to use, so now it's a bit scuffed up. This is one of my first and longest serving knives, I've done a lot of work with this knife, really really good blade. I think it's the best Mora, that's just my opinion. Uh, I think it's uh, the best mix of um, quality, balance, capability, price, all that sort of stuff. Uh, the Buck Selkirk, sent to me by Journey Wind Junk, who is a great written reviewer. Um, this knife just never resonated with me. I was corrected by about a million people because I could never get the, spi the, the spine to strike a ferro rod. It's just a bit uneven, but then they say this part here is for doing that. So there you go. Problem solved. I still don't like it because the scales come loose when you use it for any extent of, like, extent of time. So um, whether it's just your handles talking on it um, or, you know, whether it's doing some harder stuff. So it just didn't love the knife. So, sorry. Uh, next is a great knife that I did love was the Ontario Spec Plus Alpha. These are like Ontario super cheap ones made of 1075 steel. And I think they're great. They're um, uh, really well uh, made economical knives. Um, Nice thick quality blade stocks, good survival knife, um, I suppose if you don't mind the clip point. As in, you know, you could do some really rough jobs with this before it broke, I would suggest. Uh, it seems very robust and rugged in my testing at the very least. Uh, moving on is the jacked kit knife. Um, this one the tip broke off of. Um, it's in a um, pretty decent steel for a fixed blade, like a VG. Uh, 10 variant, it's like their hunting version. Uh, there's a couple of issues with this in the review, namely the tip breaking off, it didn't come very sharp. Um, they've, I, I think they've offered to send a, send another one, but I'm just not, um, 
I'm just not doing um, product reviews for other companies anymore for, for, for them sending me items to review. I just didn't, never enjoy the process and I really don't enjoy when stuff breaks or goes wrong and have to be negative. So to avoid that, I just ain't doing it anymore. I'm just buying my own stuff. Uh, so that's that, that's that. That's all my cheapish knives. Oh, of course, the one last one. Every collection needs a stinker. It's a Z Hunter fixed blade with a very small handle. The steel is like 1CR1MO. B steel, so he really, really average steel. Uh, it's probably actually, I think it's 440C. What's labeled as 440, 440 stainless. So who knows? That's that. That's all of that's all of my sort of um, little ad middling or low quality or low low cost knives, I guess is best way to put it. All right, so these are my knives that I guess I have some a bit more pride of place, I suppose. I like to try and find a use for all of these, um, and they're all just good quality and overall nice pieces. They're all in the mid to larger sized fixed blade. So I'm gonna start off with this. This is a custom knife. I reckon it's one of the two, um, I guess you could call, one of the four knives that I have that are not just production that you know you can't, you probably just can't go and buy. And this one is a full hardy knives um, sort of camp knife. It's very, very thick stock. It's got a nice sort of real basic handle. Um, very very simple kind of uh, blade. It's really really nice. It's made of uh, RWL 34 stainless steel. Slight recurve to it. It's uh, probably not going to be the pattern for everyone, but I really really liked it. He sent it to me for steel testing, and then was like, "Hey man, you can keep it." So um, thanks, Ramon. That was awesome of you. And yeah, it is a nice blade, and I do take it out and use it um, in absence sometimes of my other main camp knife, which I'll get to shortly. So uh, full hardy knives. Check them out on Instagram if you if you're keen. Um, and then a nice little Kydex sheath that came with it as well. Quality piece. Uh, a Gerber Strongarm, one of the two I have. My other one lives in my bag at work, and I use these for incredibly rough, um, abusive type jobs. And they are, from what I can tell, virtually indestructible in the hands of a human anyway. So uh, I've done a lot to these blades. This is the BDZ1 version, sent to me by an awesome subscriber. Um, because I couldn't get one in Australia. It was an Amazon-only purchase. Great thinking, Gerber. And um, it's a really nice little steel upgrade. Not a huge boost in edge retention, but enough of a one to be palatable, and um, you know you, you do feel the difference, I think. So yeah, it's a, it's a good blade, and it's ultra strong, has a decent sheath system, and you know, pretty good value still. Um, the 420HC strong arm is all you would actually need, and as such, it lives with my work gear, and it's often doing odd stuff like prying, you know, um, uh, prying metal apart and uh, cutting through big bits of wire, hitting the back with a mallet and all that sort of crazy crap that I do. Um, next is this Hogue Tanto fixed blade. This is probably the only like tactical fixed blade I have, and it is quite the tactical piece. It's a 154 cm, um, pretty aggressive looking uh, stabbing style knife, and it's got a retention sheath, sort of, I would say designed for soldiers or policemen that has like a muscle memory system, so you can't just pull it out, you have to push down this and sort of practice with getting it out to be able to get it out quickly to aided blade retention so the bad guy doesn't get it before you get it. Very, very cool. The Falk Neven. <coughs> then we've got the Falk Neven F1. Uh, probably my longest, uh, one of the longest serving knives on the channel. Absolutely wonderful knife. Um, it's been through the ringer for sure. It's done a lot of work. Held up really, really well. I would recommend this knife to anyone, even though it's just in plain old VG10 steel or laminated VG10 steel. Still a great choice for your outdoor tasks. As long as you're not cutting super fibrous stuff for ages and ages, this will do your smaller jobs. It's a bit thick, so it's a bit of a learning curve to doing like real fine stuff with it, but you can if you get good with it. And um, overall, a really great all-around companion piece, for sure. Then we've got this, the uh, camp knife that I will choose to take if I'm just going on an enjoyable day of you know walking or something like that. This is my Greystone Cutlery. This is a custom knife. Um, it's in 12C27 steel, so nothing too fancy, but it's the way it's ground, the way it's presented, the way it's put together in a really nice size. Uh, it's like, it feels like a short, short butcher style knife or something. Just more, um, it really feels like a piece of cutlery as prepared as compared to some which feel a bit more like pry bars or like um, you know big survival blades. A uh, really really nice contoured handle fits my hand perfectly. Comes a good Kydex sheath with a leather loop. Um, I like this knife a lot. It's probably my favourite fixed blade knife still. Um, Jimmy over at Greystone. I don't know how much he's making or how many he's making, but um, you could always hit him up. It's a Facebook group, Greystone Cutlery, so or Greystone Knives, so.
Check them out. Uh, next is two Bark River knives. This is my Bark River Kefart 5 in 4V steel. I mainly got it as a mule to test the 4V steel, and um, I've used it in a similar capacity to this one from time to time. I'll always choose this one though, I think I just like the handle a bit more. This is a lovely knife though. Um, may end up selling it, I'm not sure. I've done a bit of, um, I've had a bit of modification done to it though, so I did break the tip off it when I was reviewing it because I'm a moron sometimes. And um, it got it fixed. Jethro at Knife Support fixed it for me, which was cool. It's got a pretty nice original Kefart shape again now. Uh, maintained its convex grind. It's good, but um, I don't quite like it as much as this, even though the steel is probably five times better. So it's just interesting. That's me and fixed blades. The rules, the usual rules kind of go out the window. And then next is a pretty new acquisition, but a very cool knife. Review is coming. I'm just trying to make it so it's a good one. The Phobos Legion. So this is like my large survival knife, I guess, like the, I used to have a Falcon even A1 that I sold with the complete intent of getting another one, either a pro or one in satin finish, because I always hated the black coating on mine. I just wore it off straight away, started to wear it off, and I don't like how that looks when it's wearing. Anyway, um, this is my replacement for that sort of size knife in my kit, because you know, you gotta be prepared and all. And um, it's great, it really is a wonderful knife. Excellent handle. Um, you can do pretty fine stuff with it as well because it's got one of those full, you know, Bark River, really tall convex grinds. You can feather pretty pretty nicely with it too. Uh, the steel is 154 CM, no, CPM 154, so the powdered version of that steel. It comes with a really nice sort of full leather sheath too. Uh, the Phobos Legion. Uh, I think Phobos knives are going to make their own uh, in the new year and like their own type of this knife, but Bark River sort of helped them get the leg up. And um, yeah, I'm really impressed with it so far. So great knife. Just keep an eye out for the review, hopefully soon. But I'm not going to rush it out until it's actually good. So uh, let's uh, look at one one last one in terms of a companion knife, and I'll just show you my little uh, Creeley blades too. All right, so next is this uh, Spyderco Bill Moran. I almost don't think of this as an outdoors knife. It's it could do just fine as like a backpacking style hiking knife, but. This is a knife we take when we go on holidays uh, to like stay at bed and breakfast and such because those places never have good kitchen knives and it's small so it won't, you know, it might be a bit difficult, you know, preparing a whole roast turkey with it or something but um, for making your sandwiches and for just doing, like cutting up salami and cheese and stuff, it's just nice. It's painless to use a nice sharp blade of, that is my own. Really comfortable, wife likes it too. Spyderco Bill Moran, it's a great one. This is like the limited edition-ish uh, pilot version, whatever that means. We always attach these like, hey, this I made this knife for the military, as if we're going to believe that all the military actually carry it, I don't know. But uh, this that's what this, you know, the spirit of this knife is. But we're, all that sort of stuff aside, it's a great little fixed blade, um, and it's, um, yeah, indispensable when we go on holidays. So really, really cool. Next two knives are my Creeley blades. So I've shown these a few times. This is my Rex 121 Creeley knife. Um, it's a great little uh, pattern called the Mako, really, really comfortable in the hand. I do th over a thousand cuts with this from time to time on my rope cut test. Excellent, comfortable handle for such a little blade. This would be a great little bushcrafter knife if it was in a different steel because the Rex might just be a little bit weird to take care of in the field. Uh, it's a very, very advanced, like ultra hard, ultra high uh, edge, edge retaining steel. Luckily though, Gary makes these knives in all sorts of steel. So this is one in CPM Crewwear, which is a wonderful outdoor steel. Still probably a little bit harder than yeah, basic steels to sharpen in the field, but a really good tough steel that takes a really nice edge. And yeah, we'll do pretty much everything you'll throw the knife at. And really, rust resistance wise, I mean, a basic care will ensure that this stays really well finished. And look at that maple bell handle. It is just dreamlike. Excellent, excellent knives. Come in these great little sheaths as well. Um, internal pockets sheath, just fantastic. Check out Creeley Blades if you like the look of that. Let's look at the giant knives now. There's only a few of them, but uh, they've all got a special place in my collection. All right, so this is an Australian Army Golok. Uh, I don't know who makes these. Condor makes something that looks very similar. Um, but my buddy Chris sent this along to me, and I'm still not sure if you want this back, old mate. If you do, by all means, let me know. But it's been really fun to just use as a comparison piece. It's a weird one to review because it's, it isn't like the best thing ever, but it's, you know, it's got a really rough, it's got a rough end. It's just so utilitarian. But um, this one was army issue. It's got an old um, uh, code on it here that uh, indicates that it was. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Um, just clearing tool. It's quite thick as well. It's, um, yeah, definitely on par with something like the Artac 2, which I'll show you next in terms of a big chopper and probably even a better chopper than that as well, just due to the, the weight distribution and whatnot. So really nice, 
big chopper, the Australian Army Golok. It might be called something else if you're in a different army. It might be the Filipino Army Golok to you, or it might be the you know Canadian Border Force, you know, Golok, or the Spanish Rear Admiral Regiment Space Force Division official machete. Who knows? But a bit of a generic tool, but really, really good. Uh, next is the yeah, Kari, uh sorry, the Skrama from Tarava. So there's a Tarava Skrama. This is a big sort of, yeah, it's like a big hewing knife. It's good for um, brush clearing, that sort of thing. Excellent chopping blade, 80 CRV2 steel as well. Uh, I've done pretty extensive testing on this and it is one of the best choppers I've had. Really, really excellent. Seems to have a really good sweet spot about here, which surprised me given the geometry is not particularly extravagant. It's just a continuous curve, but um, really, really nicely done. Um, really comfortable handle, two different grips. Um, just a good old fashioned bush tool. Not a glamorous thing at all. I'd really recommend this to people who might do a lot of four wheel driving and just want something that's cheap but really effective because this is about half the price of the other um, expensive or the other sort of larger knives on this table. Yeah, I guess they are probably a little on the expensive side. So yeah, really, really good value. I think about $80 to get one of these over here to Australia. So really can't knock that too badly. I just have the basic sheath for it, which for me, because I just keep it in a bag or in a car, is absolutely fine. It's just a plastic sleeve. Next is my Kukri House Kukri. And yeah, I'm still trying to figure out a review on this as well. I've thinned the edge out a little bit, but it's still not where I like it. These are handmade and they're really, really nicely done. And they've got a good sort of lore and story behind them. They're not perfect though. This one has a pretty hot, pretty bad hot spot just here when you swing it. This ovaling of this um, rear pommel here has a pretty decent spike there on this sort of brass folded around piece, which when you get chopping, it can dig in on both sides into your palm. So, you know, as, as nice as these are in terms of the lore and the heritage, as usable tools, they are not the best. Uh, like, they're great, but, and I'm talking using this for like an hour, you really, or I really did notice this. And this is, it's not a matter of soft hands, it's just a matter of where it sits in my palm. It just digs in and you, I just ended up with like a pretty decent red mark slash bruise developing. So there was that too. Overall though, they're really well designed classic tools that will chop like crazy and um, my, mine came with a pretty thick edge so it has needed some modifications. And yeah, once I'm happy with how to review this thing, I will do a review on it. But um, I just mainly got it because I like the story behind these and yeah, I think a kukri is a good part of uh, anyone's uh, knife collection. So it is definitely here to stay. They come with these pretty rudimentary leather style sheaths. Um, mine come with a camouflage thing over it just because some of them do, I don't know. It's all pretty um, fast and loose from over there, but they all are just made by proper craftsmen living on the side of a mountain, making them out of like old car parts. So it's cool, it's a cool thing. It's very different to probably a lot of other knives you have in your collection. Last of all is my sort of production big chopper, the Ontario Artac 2. And this is a very good chopper indeed. It has a positively enormous handle. My largish hands even, you know, they feel the, the size of this handle pretty well too. Um, really comfortable, really good big blade. Um, almost feeling like a machete in itself. It is just, it's like an 11 and a half inch um, cutting edge. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, quite thick, three six eights thick, and this one's 5160 steel. Ontario are a little bit baffling um, which steel they're using in these from time to time. Some of them are 1095, some of them are 5160. I just had to go by what the ad said on mine, so hey, maybe it isn't, who knows? But it certainly does seem to have that toughness that 5160 has. I've had this bending on knots in the middle of logs when doing all the ridiculous battening you do in tests for these kind of knives. Did absolutely fine. So really good big knife. There's the SE Hungless as well, but this seems to have very similar um, build and, arch and, and you know geometry and structure to it. So if you don't want to spend a huge amount of money on a knife that's about this size and pattern, because frankly the pattern is very similar, um, have a crack at this one. I think the handle might be a bit blockier on this. The blade coating might be a little bit different, but uh, warm up on this at least, and maybe update to a Jungless or, or a Jungless or a Hungless or whatever you call it, or a Hungless too. Who knows? So guys, that is all my fixed blade knives at the moment. As I said, um, I just have them as enjoyment pieces. I usually put too much scuffing and crap on them to ever be able to sell them again. So here they are, they sit in my house. I'll um, find a use for them all at some point or another. But yeah, I'm not as big a fixed blade guy at the moment as a folding knife guy. So that might change as I get a bit older and as my kids are a bit more independent and I can make more outdoor trips though. So who knows? Watch this space, I guess. All right guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.